What is up guys, 70 Savage here, coming at you today with a, another video after a six month YouTube hiatus. Uh, thankfully, it is perfect timing. My last YouTube video was on these Blink cameras and I said if it got 4,000 likes, I would make a six month follow-up review. In this video, I'm gonna cover my experience so far with all of the Blink cameras and I'm gonna say whether or not I actually still recommend them or whether I'd use a different approach if I did it again. If you are new to the channel, I have converted this this van right here from a bare bones cargo van into a full-blown camper vehicle. I did everything from building the entire van out of aluminum extrusions to have a nice strong frame into the plumbing system, including the shower and the kitchen sink. And I even did a couple of fun projects like a walkable solar roof deck on top of the van. All those videos are on this channel if you're interested in learning about those. Let's go ahead and hop inside the van so we can kick things off. So to set the context for the problem that I set out to solve originally, I really wanted an easy way to ease my anxiety anytime I parked the van in like an urban environment and went up to go eat at a restaurant just to make sure that there was nobody actively trying to break in my van and I wanted to get the notification in the case that that did happen. So I started researching all sorts of different possible van security systems and I really did the comparison between all the things that I researched in that first video what I ended up settling on were these Blink security cameras. It's pretty much a direct competitor to a lot of other products that you've probably heard of. Things like Simply Safe, uh, Arlo, Google Nest Security. All those are basically just cloud connected security cameras or security systems. I ended up going with the Blink for a couple of main advantages. The first one is that they are completely wireless and battery operated, which makes them incredibly easy to install without needing to like drill holes in your vans or run wiring around. You basically just mount it. And the second reason is they're just really small, which makes them easy to mount on a vehicle like a van. I just realized this is not the best angle. So let me adjust that real quick. This might be a little bit better. You get a little bit more of the van, a little bit less of my uh, face. So let's get into the meat of the video. How has my experience been so far? So I wanna get started by talking about the biggest overall con of the Blink system. You need a Wi-Fi connection in your van. And in this day and age, I think there are two good ways to get a Wi-Fi connection in your van. The first one is a cellular Wi-Fi hotspot. And the second one is Starlink. Let's kick off with Starlink because that is my personal favorite way to connect to the internet when I'm traveling around in the van. In order to get Starlink, you do have to set up a satellite dish on the top of your van and then do a little bit of electrical connections in your cabinet so that you can switch it on. I really love Starlink because you can get an internet connection as long as your van is pointed towards the sky and you're not uh, obstructed by any trees and I love to travel to like really remote rural places so Starlink works great for me. The main downside of Starlink is that a the dish is really expensive it's pretty involved to get it all set up and most importantly it's incredibly expensive to operate on a monthly basis. Right now it's $150 a month to activate Starlink and ever since I installed the high performance Starlink dish about three months ago now I've been exclusively using that to connect the Blink cameras to. If Starlink is not an option for you due to like cost or the need to do the whole installation the next best option for Wi-Fi in the van is a mobile hotspot. When I say mobile hotspot, I'm referring to really any device that can connect to a cellular network and then has a mobile hotspot mode, creating a Wi-Fi connection that other devices in your van can connect to, such as the Blink system. Nowadays, I'm pretty sure that literally every single Android or iOS device has a hotspot mode. So if you buy a really cheap like burner phone, or in my case, I just used an extra iPad that I use when I'm traveling, it also ends up being really cheap in a lot of cases because you can just kind of add that device onto your existing mobile plan or find some sort of cheap data only mobile plan. Having the iPad added to my cellular data plan that I already have for my regular cell phone only costs an additional like $10 a month. And the really nice part about the solution is that there's like no installation required. You literally just leave the device in your van, put it on mobile hotspot mode, and you are good to go. I guess the only real downside is if somebody does break into your van, now they get to steal that hotspot device as well. So, <laughs> so I know that was an incredibly long-winded explanation of just the first part of my experience so far, but in reality, I think creating that Wi-Fi connection is like 
the big gotcha for these security systems. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit more in depth. So now I wanna dive into the overall quality of these cameras and how they've functioned for me. So overall, I'm super, super satisfied with the live video quality, as well as the motion detection alert notifications that you get on your phone when they detect something moving. And for me, that's really the only two features that I use in this security system. And for the most part, the cameras function just as good as the initial impressions I had when I reviewed them in the first video I made. That being said, there is one caveat here. I do actually use this van in the winter. So I was driving around in the snow and I did take a trip all the way out to Park City during a particularly bad snowstorm and camped when it was like two degrees outside. The exterior blink cameras that I have mounted on the outside of the van took kind of a beating and it turns out that the doorbell camera is the only one that didn't survive the winter. Some sort of snow or water got like inside the camera. I do think I'm actually going to leave the doorbell camera mounted there because it does kind of like de-incentivize anybody who's looking at the van in a sketch way, but I am going to just get a second exterior camera and mount it on the passenger side of the van and use that for actual footage. I know that the lineup of cameras that Blink offers is fairly wide. I think they offer five or six different versions, but in my opinion, I would just stick to the black square exterior cameras and use that for all of the footage that you wanna take inside or outside of the van. So overall, I'm super happy with the functionality and longevity of this system, but I'm personally just gonna to stick to the black square exterior cameras and uh, I'll put a link to those ones in the description below. I wanna talk a little bit about the three methods that I use to install these cameras and how those methods have held up. So in the previous video, I installed three cameras with three different installation methods. Ranking those three methods from best to worst, the 3M dual lock actually held up by far the best. That doorbell camera is on there so securely, even after driving through those crazy snowstorms. And it's also been pretty hot this summer, which hasn't caused the adhesive to be affected whatsoever. Second best method was the industrial zip ties. I used those to attach a camera to a tube on my roof rack and it worked pretty dang well. Although one time I was going on like a super crazy off-roading adventure and at the end of that, the camera swiveled downwards. It's not the end of the world. I really just had to like stand on the tire and then like swivel it back up and it's been good ever since. But a little bit annoying to know that like every now and then that thing like swivels down. And then third best was the regular Velcro that I used to attach the indoor camera to the headliner of the vehicle. Uh, that failed in two different ways. First of all, when it started getting hot, the adhesive on the back of the regular Velcro failed and the camera just came unstuck and fell on the ground. Second failure was that the hook side of the hook and loop regular Velcro wasn't that strong, like it didn't stick to the headliner that securely. So now it's to the point where I really only use that indoor camera whenever I'm parked in like a super sketchy place and I remember to pull it out, stick it to the headliner, and uh, I only leave it there until I leave or drive off to the next location. If you guys know a better brand of regular Velcro, please leave that in the comments below. I'll make sure to like pin it somehow so that it sticks to the top and we can share that information with everybody else trying to install one of these cameras on the inside of their van. So that actually covers the entirety of my experience so far using these Blink cameras. And now for the big question, if I had to install a security system all over again, would I do it with the same product? And my answer to that is yes, absolutely. The overall ease of install, being completely wireless and not needing to drill holes in your van is amazing. And like the side effects of them being battery powered and so easy to install aren't that bad. Like I still find the live video feature and the motion detection to be very high quality overall. Now there will be some of you out there who want like the ultra high quality 4K video or have some like super advanced feature that you really want. Blink is not the best solution for those, but for most people, I do think it's the best overall. I'm going to put links in this video description only to the parts that I actually recommend now that I've been using them for six months. Hopefully this is all the info that you wanted in a six month review. If you have more questions, always feel free to leave a comment. I try to get to as many of those as I can. And I am suffering from a lack of motivation to make YouTube videos recently. So if you did like this video, please make sure to press the like button. And as always, the subscribe button. That'll generate some motivation for me to continue to make more videos throughout the rest of the summer. I've even floated the idea to Maddie about making another travel video with her, but I do need a little bit of motivation to like actually get there. And for those of you who made it through that whole section of me begging for internet attention, thank you guys so much for watching the video. And I will see you guys next time. <laughs>